And I bought a canyon. It's my canyon. And on September the 8th, I'll jump it. And the only way they'll get me out of the air is to shoot me out with an anti-aircraft gun, because I am going to go, believe me. A lot of people have said that I couldn't jump a motorcycle a mile across a canyon. But they said that Lindbergh couldn't fly the Atlantic. They said that Shepard and Glenn had never get around the world. And they said that Armstrong wouldn't step on the moon. You know, those people have done what they've done. A person has to be an idiot to think that they couldn't get evil Knievel a mile across a canyon. My dad hired a guy named Robert Truax to design his sky cycle that was a chief engineer at NASA. And it, it led from a bike with wings with jets on it, which never would have worked, to a sky cycle that was 15 feet long. It was a contraption that was going from zero to 450 in three and a half seconds. And you're gonna be in that thing. I'm like, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? I mean, really, he was just flipping a coin. He didn't know whether his, both test rockets went right in the middle of the canyon. How would that make you feel? Here this guy's supposed to be one of the top scientists in the world, and the two shots, the two practice shots, both of them, the thing wiggles and falls into the canyon. Here's this huge gash in the earth. And here's this little, what looked like a tinker toy on a scaffold. It didn't look like the, the whole device was really adequate. It was, a, it was a rocket ship driven by steam. It's gonna go over a huge gaping canyon. It was a lovely, fun, cartoon-like painted coffin, tin coffin. I think I got to the point where I, when he was jumping the canyon, I was just pretty well numb and fed up with it all. I know it was so hard on the kids. We figured if he didn't make it, he was gonna die that day. The mood out there, I'll never forget it. It was somber. You'd almost swear this guy had a death wish. I almost hate to say that, but it looked extreme, and it was. He wasn't any more confident than I was. I don't think he thought he'd get across there, he, but he, he dug himself such a deep hole, he couldn't get out. He had to do it. This is what he said he would do. So he's getting into that thing, and he's really putting his life in the hands of, as some people would say, fate. He really thought he was gonna die, but he knew his family was gonna be in good hands because he's gonna make a lot of money doing it. He didn't know what was gonna happen when they let that thing off. When he came out and he got in that rocket, your adrenaline is just pumping and, and you, you, you have no idea what's gonna happen, you know? It was, it was, that's when I started getting sick to my stomach. Three, two, one. Whoa, it looks like a good one. Whoa, oh, evil stay with the bird. The next thing you know, the chute's out. We knew the parachute was not supposed to come out. So w when the parachute did come out, I, I mean, I saw the two test rockets go right in the middle of the canyon. He never reached full acceleration. He made it almost to the other side, but he was jumping against the wind. So after the chute did come out, he started coasting back in and ended up down in the canyon. Whoa, there's been a mistake. He looks like he's going into the canyon. The ship's going down. He floated down beyond our view. I mean, I remember looking over the edge of the canyon to see what happened. The family, and we're racing around to them now, is hysterical and in shock, crying. They think evil may be dead or maybe drowning in the river. 